what's up everyone welcome back to the vlog channel my name is kelly i'm the vlogger i need to stop doing that because i don't want that to be my official intro but i can't help it i'm always just like i don't know what to say in my intros but hello welcome back to the vlog channel like i already said today i wanted to sit down and chat with you i thought i recently did a q a on my channel but i looked back and i realized that it was from december 2022 and now it is june so i figured it was time for an update i wanted to see if you guys had any questions for me i wanted to share some life updates with you and i do have some big things to share with you in today's video so yeah that's what we're gonna be doing today i asked you on instagram to ask me some questions and you guys sent a lot of questions in there were a lot of questions that multiple people asked and i'm going to address those questions so let's just go ahead and get started question number one have you made new friends in vegas is it hard leaving friends behind when you move yes We've made some new friends in Vegas. We've tried to be social. Ryan and I are both very non-social people, so it was kind of hard to meet new people. I think it got a lot easier once our friend Leah moved here because she is very social and she makes friends so easily. So we kind of just followed her around and made friends through her. <laughs> So that's how we've met most people. Obviously, we still have friends back in New Jersey where we're from. And I didn't find it to be difficult to leave because they were there. Because I think, if anything, 2020 kind of taught me that you can be friends with people from anywhere. Honestly, I was friends with people from all across the world before 2020 happened. I feel like the majority of the people that I've been friends with are people that I've met online and just known through the internet and never actually met in person but especially in 2020 even with the friends that were kind of around in real life all the time we still were able to hang out with them virtually a lot you know they have all these games now that you can play online we did a lot of that we still do a lot of that so it's really not hard in that sense and it's also nice just because now we live somewhere really fun it's kind of an excuse for them to come out and visit so we've actually had a ton of friends come to visit since we've moved here we're just about to come up on a year of living here and we've already had so many people coming through so it is really fun to be here just because our friends can come visit us but we're still friends with them through our phones and stuff you know next question is what are you reading Ooh, I just started a new book this morning. Let me see what the name of it is. It's called The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks, and I am captivated so far. I've only gotten a couple chapters in, but it is a suspense book. I believe it's basically kind of the story of a woman who is divorced, and we see her point of view, and then we also see the point of view of the woman that her ex-husband is marrying. So I don't know what's going to happen yet, but I'm intrigued. I'm also listening to an audiobook right now. I don't know if I've talked about it much on here but I in the last like couple of years I've listened to so many audiobooks so I'm always trying to listen to an audiobook at any given moment because when I'm cleaning I will listen to the audiobook or like when I'm doing laundry or other chores and stuff and I am listening to Red White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I am about halfway through it so far another book I'm really enjoying. I do listen to my audiobooks at like one and a half times speed. I feel like I read really fast in my head and I need the audiobook to also be really fast so yeah, I am enjoying that though. Any new fantasy book recs? We're just getting into the books today, but don't worry, I have other questions. <laughs> I just read, I don't remember the author's name. Let me go back to my Goodreads, hold on. I just read a really good book called A Cursed Kiss. It's a romance book, but it is fantasy. It's by Jenny Hickman. It's called A Cursed Kiss and it is on Kindle Unlimited. And I have very much enjoyed that if you're in the mood for fantasy heavy on the romance. This is a question about video games. What do you play? When do you play? And what's your favorite game? I have not played video games in a really long time. I, as you guys know, I am a big Pokemon fan. I'm also a big Skyrim fan, but I play video games less than once a month and probably for less than two hours at a time. I just feel like I never have time to play games. Like if I have free time and I'm not, you know, making content or editing or answering comments or something like that, I feel like I'm reading and and then if I'm not doing either of those things, then I, I have time to play video games, but I just, I don't do it that often. I don't know. I kind of struggle with this feeling of like, if I'm not doing something productive or good for my brain, then I shouldn't do it. And I know that's not a good mindset to have. I'm really not a person who has many hobbies. <laughs> I struggle with that mindset because I'm always 
trying to be productive or trying to do something that's good for me. And I don't think everything should be that way. And objectively, I know that and I say that. And I'm like, I don't have to always do something that's good for me. Like I'm allowed to just chill out, but I don't know. I don't let myself do that very often. But I've also been very, very busy lately, which I'll explain a little bit why. A lot of you guys have asked me for some updates on my engagement and my wedding planning. I feel bad because <laughs> I announced my engagement in a very like sneaky sort of way. So a lot of people still don't know that I, I did get engaged. It was last year in May, my partner Ryan and I got engaged and I kind of just snuck it into a vlog. I was just like, oh, I dyed my hair, got some new clothes. Oh, and by the way, I'm engaged. <laughs> <laughs> I made it into a very casual thing and I don't think enough people realized that I got engaged. So I'm still, I've been getting questions, like I would say at least every video I get one person who's like, wait, are you wearing an engagement ring? Because I really did not make a big deal of it. And that was just because I wanted to respect Ryan's privacy and you know, he's very much not on the internet and I very much am, but our personal life together is really not online. And that's not to say that he doesn't support what I do. He's incredibly supportive. And in fact, he is usually the one who takes the pictures of me in like, situations or like if you see both of my hands in something he's the one who filmed it or took a picture of it he's usually the person who like films my vlogs if i'm not holding the camera he's incredibly supportive but he is very camera shy and people on the internet are very cruel so i do not blame him for not wanting to put himself out there so yeah i feel bad because i still get questions like every single video of people being like wait are you wearing an engagement ring are you engaged and i do feel bad that i didn't make a bigger deal out of it <laughs> But a lot of you who did know that I was engaged also have asked me in this <laughs> Q&A if we are married because a lot of you have noticed that I am actually wearing two rings on my hand. And the answer is yes, Ryan and I are actually married. Uh, like my heart's kind of racing even just admitting that. <laughs> I did not want to bring attention to it because I wanted to keep our marriage offline. Oh my gosh, I'm like shaking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it to seem like I was keeping a secret from you guys at all. I did immediately start wearing my wedding band as soon as we got married and we did elope. So it's not like there was this big party that I didn't tell you guys about. <laughs> it's been a while since we did it. We're actually coming up on a year and I know it seems like I've just been keeping this secret and I think that's why I'm so anxious about even talking about it. But I, I didn't mean to not talk about it because it's a secret. I just wanted to respect our privacy. We actually did not tell anybody when we got married because that's what eloping is. It's when you get married in secret. And we did not tell any family. We didn't tell any friends. Nobody was there. We had witnesses of the state come and, you know, sign the documents. And we just wanted it to be for the two of us. I think even though I am online, I am very much an introvert person and I get very nervous in social interactions. Ryan is pretty much the same way and I think for both of us the idea of having a big wedding where we're the center of attention all night was kind of overwhelming. <laughs> also weddings are very expensive. I also feel like there there comes to be a lot of judgment from that and I think even just eloping there's a lot of judgment and that's kind of why I wanted to wait so long to even talk about it because we kind of wanted time to well one tell everybody because we we kind of just, like I did with the engagement, we kind of just threw that out with our friends and family. Like we were like, oh yeah, we're married now, by the way. <laughs> so we did want time to tell everybody, but we also just kind of wanted time for us to, you know, be comfortable accepting that there is potentially going to be judgment from people online being like, well, why, why wouldn't you just have like a wedding? It's a very special moment kind of situation. But yeah, it, it just wasn't something that we personally wanted to do. So yeah, we just went to the courthouse one day and we got married. <laughs> my gosh, my heart is literally racing admitting that. I don't know. I, I feel like it's been so long and it's kind of been building up in my mind. And the longer I've waited, the more it felt like I was keeping a secret from you guys, which I honestly hate. And I, I don't think I'm good at keeping secrets at all, which obviously, I mean, I, I don't even take my ring off for videos or anything to try to make it seem like I'm not married. But yeah, I, I guess I've just been kind of nervous about the judgment from people. But yeah, 
All of that to say, Ryan and I did elope and we are now happily married and we are going to be celebrating our first anniversary soon and we're very excited about it. Ryan's my best friend and my soulmate and I love him and I am just very happy that we are married. <laughs> Actually, there is a related question on here. Somebody asked, did you get the engagement ring you wanted or would you change the design? I actually did pick out my engagement ring. Brian and I went shopping together for it because I didn't know what I wanted and I really just wanted to be a part of the process. You know, when you think about it, like the wedding ring and the engagement ring, these are things that you're wearing for the rest of your life. I feel like for a long time, it was kind of the norm to be fully surprised. And, you know, at first I had a whole document or Pinterest board, whatever, where I was listing out what I liked and what I wanted, but the more I thought about it, the more I was like, I've never actually seen this type of ring on my finger, so I have no idea what it would look like. So I was starting to get a little nervous about that. So he asked me if I wanted to be a part of the process and I jumped at that because, you know, I'm, I'm not really a surprise person. I don't like surprises. So I was kind of like, is it okay if I pick out exactly what I want? <laughs> and he was totally on board with it. And, you know, when we were at the jeweler working on exactly what I wanted, the girls who were helping us out were talking about how that's like getting a lot more common now and people, you know, are having the opportunity to choose. And I know not everybody likes that. Some people want to be surprised. I am personally not that kind of person. So I did pick it out and I'm glad I did because I got the opposite of what my Pinterest board was. <laughs> I really thought that I wanted a very specific type of ring, but then when I tried it on, I did not like the way it looked on me. I just didn't feel like it suited my fingers and we spent hours just trying on different rings and stuff until I fell in love with one of them and it did have a matching wedding band so that was very easy as well but yeah so I get to pick up my engagement ring so I'm 100% happy with it. Somebody asked will you ever dish the full drama on the moving company or did you already and I missed it. I think I did. I feel like I did in my last Q&A although I know that was a while ago and it was probably just buried within the questions but basically what happened is they were really efficient taking our stuff out of the apartment and like wrapping up the big pieces of furniture and I was very pleased with the service in New Jersey but then once they got here it was not great. For starters, they did lose our stuff for a little while. It was a very brief period of time, but for about a day we were freaking out because everything that we owned was in this moving bin and it was missing. And they actually started coming into this apartment with somebody else's stuff and we were just like, oh my gosh, somebody else has our stuff. And then of course with that there were delays and then when they did bring in our furniture they were very rough with it, so a few pieces broke. It wasn't anything totally severe, but our little fireplace, there's like a crack in the veneer. One of our nightstands is a little cracked as well. And then a lot of my Helmer drawers got bent out of shape. And I feel like there was something else too. I don't remember at this point, but we were fighting with the company for a really long time and they were giving us a very hard time and they were acting like we broke our own stuff to try to get them to pay us, which I would never do. I, I like the stuff that I own and I don't want to have to replace it. Especially like this, that's where our little fireplace thing is. That took us seven hours to build. Like I do not want to rebuild that. So yeah, that was a whole struggle. We ended up just getting the money back that we paid for the insurance because they would not pay us the value of the items that they broke. So yeah, definitely not ideal. I've been getting a lot of DMs about this, but somebody asked, are you planning to move to the Las Vegas neighborhood with Pokemon named streets? If you missed it, there's like a new story going around where some in Vegas, they did start memeing streets in this community after Pokemon, which is pretty hilarious. I have not seen them. I don't know exactly where they are, but no, it would be very funny to live there, but no, we're, we're not gonna live there. <laughs> but I will tell you another life update is that we are not staying here. We are not renewing our lease. We are leaving. So get ready for moving content because we are not gonna be here. <laughs> so we got, we got a lot of life updates in today's video. What was the last thing you Googled? Let me check, I don't remember. I like always leave stuff up on my phone after I've Googled it for whatever reason. So my Safari app is just all of the things I've Googled in the last like year. Every once in a while I'll go through and just like delete it, but no, I leave it up. But yeah, um, the last thing I Googled was the high speed train that they're claiming is going to connect to LA and Vegas. Expected to open in 2027, it says. I don't believe it. I don't know if it's gonna happen. They've been talking about doing that for years. Somebody wants to know, how are you doing? And not a question, but I love 
the living life, nothing much happens vlogs. Thank you. That's actually my favorite kind of content to watch on YouTube. For whatever reason, I just find so much comfort in watching people live their everyday life. So I always want to make that kind of content, but I always get nervous that people are just gonna be like, why are you posting this? Nobody cares. <laughs> So it's always very nice to hear that. But yeah, as far as how I'm doing, I think there was a long period where I was just not doing well in terms of my mental health. And I think a lot of it was tied to where I am right now. But as soon as we kind of made the decision that we're not gonna be here, I felt a huge weight has been lifted and I, I will talk about it in a video in the future, but for right now, I'm I'm not gonna cause any more trouble for myself. But yeah, we, we kind of went through it for a while, like a really long while, but now we are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and things are getting a lot better. So I'm feeling better. I'm definitely overwhelmed with all the stuff that we have to do, but we are working on it and things are getting better. So I, I'm feeling pretty good. But yeah, I've just been so busy and I feel bad because I wasn't posting as many videos as I like to post because I was so stressed out and honestly like really going through a depressive episode but now I'm kind of out of it and feeling better but I'm so busy that I still don't have time to post as much content as I want to but I'm working on finding the balance and also we're almost done with like the crazy hectic stuff so we'll get there soon don't worry I'm sure you get a ton of PR what do you do with collections you don't post or aren't a fan of I donate them I keep a little box well it's actually kind of a big box of polishes that I don't like that I am going to to send to a donation place. I usually give my friends and family an opportunity to kind of comb through them first and see if they want anything before I get rid of them. But I also don't accept much PR. I, I try to keep it very much confined to brands that I like and brands that I want to try. But I feel like I, I turn down, honestly, the majority of the PR that people offer to send to me just because if I know it's a brand that I'm not a big fan of or if it's just not something that I'm interested in, I will try to not receive it at all because I, I think it's kind of wasteful to get stuff that I'm not going to review. <laughs> when is the podcast coming back? I love it and miss it dearly. That means a lot to me. Thank you so much. So we are taking a break right now from the podcast. We did two seasons back to back, but we just wanted to give it a breather to plan our future seasons and also give people an opportunity to listen to them. We don't have a date yet, but we are going to come up with that soon. So stay tuned. We're very excited for the future seasons. Is is there a brand that has been shady towards you? Yes, absolutely. I think one of the hardest things about being a person who does what I do is finding out that a lot of brands are shady. <laughs> Unfortunately, I feel like there's just some brands that on the consumer end, it seems like they're incredible, but when you see the practices that they do behind the scenes, you kind of realize that they're really just in it for the money and not for the love of polish, which I honestly find to be really disheartening and I try not to let it get to me because obviously like at the end of the day, brands want to make money, but I do think that it's hard. But yeah, I mean, a lot of brands are shady, so I would just say, as a consumer, be careful and also just don't be afraid to give criticism to brands that you love. I think it's really important to never just blindly follow a brand because if you're not giving them honest feedback about how you feel about their products, then you're not giving them a chance to improve. So even if they are just in it for the money, we still want them to put out the best product that they can so that we can get good product. You know what I mean? There's a lot of shady brands out there. I do not like talking about drama on my channel and I don't like to give brands that I don't like attention just because I feel like a lot of brands kind of have this mindset that like negative press is still good press because people are talking about you. So I like to just let them kind of just fade into the background and not talk about them. What is your favorite food of all time? Love your videos, by the way. Thank you so much. My favorite food is sushi or poke bowls. I love raw fish and rice. Delicious. Advice on how to heal a broken heart. People suck sometimes. I agree, people do suck sometimes. I'm sure you're not gonna wanna hear this, but really time is the best thing. You know, they say time heals all wounds. Sometimes when you're in the thick of it, it feels like you're never going to get over it. But you know, over time, 
time you're gonna realize that you're thinking about it less and less, you're feeling it less and less, and things that hurt so acutely when it was fresh are just either you barely feel it or you don't feel anything at all. As far as like actual tangible stuff you can do, I think, and I'm not a professional, but I'm just gonna give my opinion on what I would do. I think that distracting yourself is a really good way to kind of remind yourself that there is more than just the hurt that you're experiencing. You know, as much as it feels good to wallow in bed and listen to sad music and eat candy and just not take care of yourself, you're really just kind of fueling the flame and making yourself feel worse over time. And I think that getting out, hanging out with your friends, doing hobbies, you know, focusing on other things, take yourself on dates. If this is a romantic relationship, I'm just assuming. But I also think it's very important to feel what you're feeling. You know, don't disregard how you're feeling. Don't push it down and try to pretend that it's not happening. I think there's a healthy balance between laying in bed, listening to sad music and crying over it and pretending that nothing happened and just going out and having an incredible time. There, there's really, you want to be in the middle on this side, uh, at least in my opinion. If you have people in your life that you can talk to about it or a professional would be a great person to talk to about it while still letting it not take over your whole life. So I guess the short version is have fun, distract yourself, don't think about it all the time, but also let yourself feel the sadness that you feel. Let yourself work through it. If you're suppressing those feelings, they're not going to get any easier. But yeah, time is really the best thing. You know, I, I think about my previous relationships and how at the time I thought this is always going to be the person that I feel this way about or I'm never going to get over this hurt. When you first are going through it, and honestly, it can sometimes feel like for the first few months or even a year or longer, it feels like it's never going to not feel this way, but one day you're gonna wake up and you're gonna be like, man, I forgot that that's how I used to feel. <laughs> I don't know. I hope that helps. I'm not a professional. <laughs> Have you read Fourth Wing? If yes, thoughts. If no, read it. It's so good. I feel like everybody's talking about this book. I have not read it and I looked up the synopsis and it doesn't sound like the kind of book that I would be into, but I don't know. Am I wrong? Let me know. Do you ever paint your fiance's nails for fun? Oh my gosh, I have a story for you guys. So I had never painted Ryan's nails before, but a few months ago we were in LA for something, something exciting perhaps. And we were playing around with different nail polishes and I painted his nails and he did not like it at all. Not because of the way it looked, I mean, they were pretty polishes, it looked good, but he felt like, I'm like cracking up because this is so funny and I get it, but he just felt like his nails felt so heavy. And I don't know if you guys have ever felt this where like if you have a long period of time where you're not painting your nails or not painting your toenails and then you do, you're like, man, this feels so weird. Like he, he was like, why does it feel so cold? <laughs> So he was not a big fan. I don't think I can, uh, I don't think I can get him to be into nail polish like I am, but I told him he just has to get used to the feeling, but he, he didn't like it. Hair color upkeep. So I have been using box dyes. I do need to retouch it. Luckily my hair is a similar color to my natural color, but I do have a lot of grays that I try to cover up. So I have been using box dyes. I don't know which brand I've been using because I just kind of pick whatever's on sale. But honestly, the last couple of times I did go to the salon, I I feel like my hair felt so damaged after and it took so long to get it back into somewhat healthy shape. I feel like I'm still recovering. So I don't know what they're doing out here, but maybe it's the hard water, but my hair has not felt good from the salons out here. So I I've just been doing it myself. Advice for mean girls at work. I'm 40, they're 30ish and act like it's high school. Exclude me from convos. Ooh, I hate that. And that has happened to me before at many, many jobs. I feel like it's more common with people that really just don't have anything exciting going on in their lives where they make the workplace into something dramatic just so they have like something to keep entertained by. Honestly, I don't entertain it at all. Again, this is advice that's specific to me, but in those instances, I have not tried to be friends with people. I'll be friendly. I'm, I don't recommend being rude to your coworkers. I think you can be friendly with them without being friends with them. But if they don't want to eat lunch with you, sit by yourself. I used to bring headphones to work and I would just listen to music, listen to a podcast. I used to write fictional stories at lunch. I don't think 
that you need to be besties with work people. It's great when you find somebody at work that you can really connect with, but it's definitely not a necessity. So don't let it hurt your feelings. Try not to feel left out and, you know, just take it as an opportunity to think, I don't need these people. I'm just gonna go be cool by myself. <laughs> that's probably bad advice, but yeah, that's, that's what I've done. How do you feel about moving to Vegas now that some time has passed? So yeah, we have lived here for almost a year now and we love it. Things that I absolutely love. I love the sunshine. I love how warm it is here. I love that the strip is right here and I can just go have fun whenever I want, even though I don't drink, I don't gamble. But just being there is so fun. I love walking around. I love people watching. I just love exploring. And there's so many good foods here. I think the biggest thing that I love is the weather, just because it's so much brighter here. You know, in New Jersey, there were so many cloudy days and here it's very rare to have a cloudy day or a rainy day. And I feel like that just helps my mood a lot. So no regrets on the moving. I mean, the moving company, we didn't love and living in this particular apartment, we're not as pleased as we thought we were, but we'll we'll talk about that another time. How and where did you and Leah meet? If you don't know, Leah is my bestie who also happens to live in Vegas now. We actually met a really long time ago. We met, I wanna say in college, but it wasn't technically in college. We met randomly at a block party in like, I think it was 2010. I heard her talking about the college that I went to and I went over and chatted with her and she told me that she was gonna go to that college. It was actually, honestly, Honestly, kind of a funny story because that is not how we became friends but that's how we met and it was a lot more other stuff happened before we actually became friends but maybe I'll have her on here to chat about it sometime because it is a funny story. <laughs> Any east side of the country advice? I've never been there but I'm days away from moving to Pennsylvania. Well congratulations on the move that's very exciting. I think the biggest thing I would say is it's not too different but there are things that are very different there so my biggest piece of advice is do not not take it personally if people do not want to chat with you. I think, especially in the Northeast, people are not as friendly to strangers as they are down South or out West. And it, it's not even a matter of friendliness. It's just like people in the Northeast don't really like to talk to strangers. So people are not going to really like stop and chat with you. I mean, they might, I don't know. But in my experience, that's not really something that happens. Although when we moved here and also when I lived in Georgia, I felt like everybody's so chatty. We all kind of just have our purpose and we go to accomplish that purpose and we don't get distracted. So yeah, don't take it personally if people are not in the mood to chat. If you say like, hey, how are you? What's going on to somebody and they just smile at you and keep walking, that's pretty common there. What else? Well, you should definitely go to Wawa because that's the most incredible convenience store ever. They have delicious sandwiches. And also at some point you need to try pork roll egg and cheese because it's delicious. I don't know if there's anything else. Just know that people are not as friendly there. That's, that's the biggest one. Would you ever do makeup tutorials again? I love your style and your makeup. Thank you so much. I don't know. Sometimes I toy with the idea of having a separate channel where I do makeup content, but I don't know. It seems kind of daunting. <laughs> to do. And I also feel like my makeup style is very specific and it's also what a lot of people consider to be dated because it was like a very popular style in the 2010s and I guess not so much now, but it's just the way I like to do my makeup. So I don't know. I've done a few makeup tutorials on my main channel, but maybe I'll do one here and there, but I don't think I'm going to make it a regular part of my current channel. Maybe something in the future. I don't know. How do you keep the spice alive in your relationship? I think that communication is the strongest thing that you can have in a relationship. If you are communicating, then things are smooth sailing. Even if they're not smooth sailing, communication is like the most important thing you can have. So even if things don't feel like they're going well, know that they are going well because you're communicating. When you're communicating with your partner, you have a very good handle on what your partner's needs are and you have a very good handle on what your needs are and it keeps things very good. Why did you choose Las Vegas to move to and why did you leave New Jersey? I did actually do, I think it was a whole video on my reasons for picking Vegas and why we were leaving New Jersey. I'll put it up in the cards, but basically we liked the weather, we wanted to live somewhere less expensive and we kind of just wanted an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> That's the gist of it, but I, I explained it in full. What is the hardest part about being online? I think 
that the hardest thing is people saying hurtful things. And a lot of times I know it doesn't come from a malicious place. I think the easiest thing to ignore is like a passerby just randomly being like, you stink, your videos are awful. Like that's easy. Cause I, I, I don't know you, I don't care about you. I think it's hard when you develop a relationship with your community and you see people in your community saying hurtful things. So like I will always recognize the names of people who comment a lot or people I engage with a lot and sometimes I start to feel a bond with those people and sometimes they can say unintentionally hurtful things and it does make me feel bad. I try not to let it affect me. And for the most part, I think I'm pretty good about just brushing stuff off. But I think especially when I'm going through more stressful times in my life, I feel like the only thing I have control of is my content online. I start to feel a little bit out of control when I get those types of comments. And I think that's when I start to let it affect me. So I, I think that's the hardest thing. This is a good one. What if you fall out of love? with nail polish. I don't think I ever will, to be honest. I think it's something that I really latched onto and I don't see myself not enjoying it just because it's been so many years already and if I still enjoy it now, I'm probably gonna enjoy it long term. Uh, as far as making content online, I don't think I would be able to continue making content if I didn't enjoy the subject. I think that the main reason why it's so easy for me to make videos and why it's so easy for me to brush off comments and, and everything that comes with being a content creator is because I love the subject matter so much. Nail polish, as silly as it sounds, is something I'm very passionate about. I love seeing the process of how nail polish is made. I love dissecting a nail polish and figuring out what components went into it to make it look the way that it does. I love, love, love having discussions with people about it. It's just so crazy to me that I've found a community of people who are as interested in nail polish as I am, <laughs> where we can just like sit and talk about like, oh, well, this polish is a little bit different because it's like this. And somebody else can chime in and be like, well, it is very similar to this shade because they both have XYZ pigment in it. So like, I don't know, it's just fun. But yeah, I would not be able to make the content that I make if I didn't love nail polish. So I'd probably try to pivot and make different content because I still love making content. I think that in addition to the nail polish, there's also other things that I love about being online and that's making videos, editing videos, you know, being an introvert and being able to talk to people online without physically putting myself out there. And when you're, you're commenting stuff, like via a keyboard, it's easier to compose your thoughts. So it's nice to be able to have interactions with people without having to be in person as an introvert. I think that's just great. So yeah, I would probably still try to make content. It would just be something different. Uh, I don't know what it would be though. Maybe I would do book reviews. As a Canadian who hasn't been to Vegas and doesn't drink, gamble, or party, what would you suggest? I actually don't do any of those things either, but I really love Vegas for the food. I love it for the people watching. I think that it's really cool walking around the strip as a tourist because each hotel has a very different theme and they put a lot of little details into everything you know even certain places their bathrooms are themed and there's incredible food here the weather is so nice so there's really a lot to do just kind of run around and explore and see where you end up sorry my camera died but i'll just do one last question just to finish this off and that is do you think you'll do any more nail art streams honestly i'm not sure i want to and i really enjoyed doing them when i did but i feel like there's something a little bit overwhelming about being live. I obviously am a person who has a lot of anxiety. I feel like as an also introverted person, it's a lot easier to make content where I feel like I can take the time to kind of think about what I want to say or, you know, what I want to do. Whereas live streams, you're kind of put on the spot and almost feels like an in-person interaction, which is good and bad. One, because it feels like a more intense real-time connection with people, which is good, but on the bad side, it does get to be a little bit overwhelming. And I feel like every single time I streamed, without exception, every single time, I was convinced that people were gonna be mad at me. I know that that probably sounds silly, but I was always concerned 
I would get stressed out about missing a comment as it came through and I just didn't want people to be upset with me for that. I was always worried that like something I said offhand was going to be taken the wrong way. You know, if I said something like, oh, like I'm too old for that, then that would mean I'm saying like everybody who is my age or older is not allowed to do that thing and then like try to backtrack and explain myself and I would get so overwhelmed. I don't know. I did initially stop doing the stream just because we moved here and then after we moved here I realized that our apartment is not very soundproof and it's actually a little bit hard to create live content here because you can hear a lot of stuff going on around and I generally have to time filming my stuff around that which is not ideal. So that was the reason why I stopped but the more I think about it the more like daunting it is to get back into doing it just because I'm like I feel like I'm <laughs> I'm gonna get back into that mindset where I'm constantly worried that I'm doing something wrong or upsetting people or you know if I mess up then people are gonna be like oh she's a fraud or you know I don't know it's just it's the irrational worries coming out <laughs> so I don't know maybe it's something when we move try again and see if I can kind of just force myself to relax about it and not take it too seriously but right now it feels kind of daunting <laughs> but yeah I will end the Q&A here thank you guys so much for submitting your questions I'm sorry I didn't have a chance to go through all of them but I really do appreciate when you ask me questions. I love sharing stuff with you. Sometimes I get a little scared. I'm glad that I'm finally able to share these updates with you on what's going on with me and I hope you enjoyed the video. I will be having a lot of stuff coming soon about the process of leaving this apartment and finding somewhere else to live so stay tuned for that and I will see you all in my next video.